Regular programming will not be seen this evening, so we may bring you the following Eyewitness News special report. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me show love. Don't tell me you love me, show me. Bishop Walt does that very well. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. I think of the most perfect example of a Christ-like person that I can, I've, I've ever experienced in my lifetime. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. He's just a saint. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, how happy to love. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the shadows of faithfulness and love. This is an Eyewitness News special. Bishop Ott, a good and faithful servant. Baton Rouge says goodbye to a good and faithful servant. This is St. Joseph's Cathedral, an historic church that played an integral part in the life of Bishop Stanley Joseph Ott. Good evening. I'm John Pastorek. Bishop Ott celebrated many masses here. He also performed many baptisms, weddings, and funerals here. He spent his first day as bishop here and his last day. And once I asked him, years from now, how do you want to be remembered? And he turned to the scriptures to answer. The Gospel of chapter 25, when Jesus said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. This is a special program about a good and faithful servant who shared his joys, his love, and his peace with all of us as he shared his light in the Lord. It was one of my last visits with a friend and inspiration of Bishop. Hey, Bishop, how you doing? Welcome. Good to see Good you. To Thank see you very you. much. Fine. Thank Come you. right in. Thank you. At the time, Bishop Bott had battled cancer for more than a year, what he called the lanyap year of his life. His stamina and ability to carry on as bishop had defied the odds and surprised doctors who said it was a miracle he was still alive. And in his gracious, humble way, he showed me around his residence and some of his treasures. It is uh, the visit of Mother Teresa, her first visit to Baton Rouge. It's a picture, a prayer, and a precious medal from Mother Teresa of Calcutta, one of his friends and fans. Don't look for spectacular actions. What is important is the gift of yourselves. It is the degree of love that you invest in each of your deeds. This is a, a baseball with a, the signature of Melot, my second cousin. An autographed baseball and a bat from what he describes as the pride of the Ott family. Baseball Hall of Famer Mel Ott. He was a very good person, uh, a person of character, uh, an athlete that I think young people especially could look up to and imitate. And that gives me uh, the greatest joy that he was uh, a, a good Ott. <laughs> How do you like that hat? I think that hat is fine. It, it fits me quite well. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I must confess, though, uh, I'm terrible at playing baseball. <laughs> That's not my thing, but I enjoy the game. This is my ordination uh, gift from my godmother. It is the vestments he wore when he was ordained a priest more than 40 years ago. And his bishop's coat of arms, adorned with an S for Stanley, a little baseball for his famous cousin Mel, and a motto that reflected this bishop's life and legacy. The motto, yes. Uh, but in the Latin, it is lux in domino, and translated means be light in the Lord. This light first shined June 29, 1927. Stanley Josephot was born in Gretna, Louisiana. 
there were many early signs this would be a light in the Lord. I think God was calling me, and I had the great uh, good fortune in God's providence to have a good family. My parents were both of sincere faith. They were pious, uh, hardworking, loving people. Uh, my whole family, my brother, my, si my sisters and nun, my brother went to be a brother for a few years. I had an aunt uh, who was a religious sister. Uh, I was an altar boy. My godmother, uh, when I was baptized, she said a little prayer that I might become a priest one day. So from the very beginning of my life, uh, I was encouraged to uh, you know, seek the things of God. He sought the things of God at St. Joseph's Seminary in St. Benedict, Louisiana, and Notre Dame Seminary in New Orleans. And his light was bright as he earned the nickname Tiny. A campus newspaper described him as a seminarian who'd won a place in the hearts of his schoolmates by an unfailing smile and pleasant personality. He was ordained to the Holy Priesthood on December 8, 1951, at the North American College in Rome. An eternal light shining in the eternal city. It's like your wedding day. You know, it's uh, a day of special memories. Uh, in my own particular case, I was ordained in Rome. Uh, my family could not be there. So uh, I had a lot of time personally to reflect on, you know, the, that day. And it was a day filled with joy and peace. And this light shined in Louisiana for more than four decades. His first assignment at St. Francis Cabrini Parish in New Orleans as assistant pastor. In 1957, the light beamed in Baton Rouge as he was assistant chaplain of LSU's Catholic Student Center. In 1961, assistant pastor of St. Joseph's Cathedral. And in 1966, he was appointed chancellor of the Diocese of Baton Rouge and honored with the title of Reverend Monsignor. In 1976, Monsignor Stanley Ott received some rather spectacular birthday gifts on his 49th birthday, a bishop's ring, mitre, and staff. He was ordained auxiliary bishop of the Archdiocese of New Orleans. And this light beamed again in Baton Rouge, as on January 18, 1983, Pope John Paul II named Stanley Ott the third bishop of Baton Rouge, following the death of Bishop Joseph Sullivan. He was installed on March 25th at St. Joseph's Cathedral, where thousands of people gathered to meet their new bishop and bask in his light. You certainly will receive a wonderful, a very sensitive, and a very pious, able, ordinary. Today, we as Christians rejoice with Mary and with Joseph. Hail for the grace. The Lord is with you and the Spirit of God will come down upon you to fill your heart and your soul. And Joseph, too, was filled with the Spirit. It is this joy of the Holy Spirit that fills my heart and prompts me to say to each one of you, and to those watching television, to so many who have expressed good wishes and prayers, thank you, thank you, thank you. The life of a bishop is uh, really uh, a very demanding one. On the one hand, you have many responsibilities. <laughs> and when you're ordained, there was a, a book from the Vatican Council II of uh, the expectations of a bishop. And if you read that, you would despair. <laughs> because the book, you know, you'd have to be like Jesus Christ, you know, uh, to, you know to be a, a good bishop. So uh, you, know, you, you read the... Uh, you read the instructions and all the virtues and the wisdom and everything a bishop is supposed to have. And then I, I realized that at the time of my nation, I could only be Stanley, you know, that I would uh, try to be God's instrument. I would try not to be an obstacle <laughs> in God's grace. Like Mother Teresa loved to say, I am a pencil in the hand of God. As bishop, he was a pastoral pencil who wrote clearly the message of the Lord. 
a message of evangelization, of ecumenism, of unity. As he brought his light into the diocese and into the community, he brought people together, Catholics and non-Catholics alike. He was truly Baton Rouge's man for all seasons. I think of the most perfect example of a Christ-like person that I can, I've, I've ever experienced in my lifetime. He is what truly what a Christian is all about. He is a man that truly cares about each and every one of us. I think there's no finer bishop anywhere in the nation than Bishop Ott. He's such a man of peace and he's such a man of reconciliation. I think of anything that he has brought to, to the diocese and to the priests, it's been a greater harmony, a greater unity. He's been a man who has reached out to us. He's known us for a long time. He's been in this diocese, probably from its very beginning. And because of that, he can call us each by name. A lot of my efforts and energies were inspired by seeing him going to help all kinds of, of people. It's a, he's just a saint. And as he preached simplicity, humility, and self-sacrifice, his light shined in soup kitchens where he served the homeless. How long have you been struggling with the cancer? Since it lit up hospitals where he consoled the hopeless. It also shined in the darkness of prison cells where he ministered to the hapless. I think the overriding you know, theme of the scriptures is that God is merciful, uh, Jesus, the good shepherd, leaves the 99 to get the one stray sheep. So that has been more or less my, uh, my attitude. Uh, God is constantly calling us to his love. And so I always try in preaching to uh, you know, give a, a sound of hope. He is love. He is peace. He is joy. You see the light in his eyes when he smiles. Um, I see a shepherd, a giving, caring, loving person, um, peacemaker. Uh, he's had an ability to, to pull people together um, and, and to make everybody feel special. In his own humble and sincere way, he is another Christ. And that's what we should be grateful for. So uh, the Diocese of Baton Rouge has been blessed, but no matter where he would have lived on this part of the earth, his mission would have been, I'm going to follow Jesus and be like him. Why don't we stop arguing about Christianity and start to live it? And that's what Bishop Ott's been doing in his diocese. He's been not talking mercy, he's been showing mercy. He's been not talking forgiveness, he showed forgiveness. He's not talked humility, he showed humility. He's not talked patience, he showed patience. And hopefully one by one, we'll all copy and that's happened. Recently, my doctors told me that I have a sarcoma of the liver. A very rare Bishop Ott's family, friends and fans were shocked and stunned in March of 1991, when he announced he'd been diagnosed with a rare form of liver cancer. In a very special way, I can relate today much more clearly to those of you who are shut-ins, who are suffering from some serious illness, especially those of you who are cancer patients. I am confident in my own faith with the beautiful words of Scripture, St. Paul saying, that God will comfort us in all our trials. And I'm also comforted by the thought of St. Paul writing to the Colossians that we are called to be saints, that when we use our sufferings in union with Jesus on the cross, that God will use our sufferings in the communion of saints to bring blessings to our family, to our church, to our community. So let us pray together and suffer together and find our strength our courage, our joy from Jesus, knowing that like the little grain in the gospel today, God calls us not to death, but to life. God calls us to a life of happiness, forever joy with him in heaven. Let us pray that 
you and I might achieve that goal. Even though doctors told him he had only six to nine months to live, the light never dimmed. It only got stronger. Very, very. And when he returned home from MD Anderson Cancer Clinic in Houston, with promising results from his first round of chemotherapy treatments, he vowed to keep on shining. Cancer doesn't have to be the last word, and that much depends upon the individual, his attitude, his faith, his outlook, his determination to respond to it. And he responded to it with a stronger faith, a determination, and a positive attitude. Daily doses of exercise. The cancer didn't even slow him down in the annual Bishop's Run. And a special diet. He became a health nut with a non-fat macrobiotic diet. It was the spirit helping the body. And from month to month, the light didn't flicker. So that the first round is over and uh, it's been very successful for that. I'm grateful. I begin my second chemotherapy uh, this coming week locally. I've been very blessed. Uh, the doctors say I have done remarkably well. Uh, I have not been in bed one day since uh, last March, since my illness. So God has given me the strength and the stamina to continue my normal duties. Since I became ill in the beginning of March, uh, I have not missed one engagement or one ceremony. And to me, this has been a great grace, a blessing from the Lord. This is my... Uh, my ninth month was my cancer, and the doctor said, uh, unless God would uh, intervene, uh, I wouldn't live more than nine months. So, so now, anything beyond November is lenyap. <laughs> I am just very, very grateful that uh, I just keep going on and on and on. So uh, I thank the community for the wonderful support and prayers. I'm overwhelmed by people almost every day from all walks of life, all churches who, uh, who support me. So. Uh, pray for me, so thank you all. This spiritual strength and stamina helped him keep an exhaustive schedule. From masses to management. Sister. Ribbon cuttings to groundbreaking. Baptisms to confirmation. In his light, a bishop's day was never done. He wants to touch more people. He wants to do as much as he can. I think it's made him uh, disregard the inconsequential. You know, the things that aren't important anymore, he just ignores. And, and he's just like he's racing towards the prize. And his prize was a visit with his soldiers of faith in the field, his priests, nuns, and brothers or the young people, the children in the schools, where he often heard this. We love you, Bishop Bond. Which the vision Lord Jesus And with other cancer patients to you, in a unique ministry of mercy. We can relate to each other's feelings and, and um, fears and um, whatever the future holds for us. It's like my family being here. Oh, it just gives me a good feeling. We hope you get well. Thank you for all you have done. St. Augustine School, the eighth grade, and uh, New Roads. And the best cancer medicines, he said, the prayers, and the thousands of get well cards and letters he received from all over the world, from Mother Teresa. I will pray for you that you grow in holiness and in that tenderness of God's love for each other and for all those that come in contact with you. A blessing from Pope John Paul when Bishop Bott was in Rome celebrating his 40th anniversary as a priest. Without saying a word, the Pope embraced me and uh, he made the little sign of the cross on my forehead. Uh, he kissed me in his Polish uh, manner. And uh, we say a pitch with a thousand words. So I think the Holy Father was expressing compassion, love, support, especially for the sick, as he does you know, around the world on his trip. So that was very meaningful for me personally that uh, I would get that special blessing from uh, the Pope. 
also meaningful, also special, September 12, 1991. Bishop Stanley Joseph Ott Day in Baton Rouge, when he was honored at a special mass. To a man of shining light, sterling leadership, and deep spiritual love, we bestow this key to our city, your halo of community service, and your works of mercy. Continue to unite and inspire the people of East Baton Rouge, September the 12th, 1991. And at one of the biggest banquets the city has ever seen, several thousand people pledged to share his light and carry on his work through the Bishop Stanley Ott Works of Mercy Trust Fund. I hope I can say with Christ, as he said so beautifully, you know, at the end of his life in scriptures, I have done the work, you know, the Father has given to me. I have completed the job, and I would only hope in my own unworthy way I could say the same. I have done the job God gave me. When the Lord finally calls you and, and you write that final chapter, um, how do you want us, uh, the people of Baton Rouge, to remember Bishop Stanley Joseph Ott? I would <clears throat> just hope in some way the uh, my motto be a light. And if I have been a light in some small way, that all of us can be a light, that we might reflect the Easter light of the risen Christ. And the light is joy and happiness and peace. Bless them with a safe trip Bless them with a successful trip. And his light okay, continued to shine to through the pain, the weakness, okay. and the crippling effects of the cancer. His blessing of this medical mission trip to Central America on October 17, 1992, was one of his last public appearances. Two days later, he was hospitalized. On November 10th, Bishop Stanley Joseph Ott was named the Outstanding Citizen of 1992, the winner of the Golden Deeds Award. More than 1,100 people, the largest turnout in Golden Deeds history, gathered at the Great Hall to honor him for his great deeds. He cared about everyone, and that is exactly what the Golden Deeds Award is all about. Someone who goes out of their way to make life better for the rest of us. The bishop remained hospitalized, but he was there in spirit, in a pre-recorded message to his flocks, a message of thanks, of hope, of goodbye. I leave that Rouge now to go back to God, God who is so good, and who I believe as we fulfill the golden deeds in our own life, each and every one of us, we will come to a rich harvest in the eyes of God, where the scripture says so beautifully, the just shall shine like the sun. That's my wish for myself and for all of us, that what are we doing now to make our community better or we have a lasting impact upon our own lives and upon the lives of all our people. And so I say, thank you, Baton Rouge. I love you, Baton Rouge. God bless you, Baton Rouge. A good description of the life of Bishop Stanley Joseph Ott is found in the wisdom of Mother Teresa. She's fond of saying, the fruit of prayer is the deepening of faith. The fruit of faith is love. The fruit of love is service. Bishop Ott spent a fruitful life of prayer, love, and service. We'll always cherish those inspiring images of the bishop baptizing babies at Easter, serving the poor at Thanksgiving, and giving the gifts of love and understanding to cancer patients at Christmas. And I get the feeling that somehow, somewhere, he's watching us here and now and smiling. Because when you share his story, you share his light in the Lord. Bishop Ott, we love you. Thanks for touching our lives with your light. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Good night and God bless. Divine Master, 
Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. Here we go, five, six, seven, First time yes, buyers seven, and investors, it's, it's the Bayou Blast. Years. Sunday, December 13th, when the Resolution Trust Corporation will auction more than 100 properties absolute to the highest bidder, regardless of price. Land, residential, and commercial properties located throughout South Louisiana must be sold. Excellent financing is available for purchases over $100,000, and 2% broker participation is offered. Call LFC Real Estate Clearinghouse for details. Call 1-800-966-0615. He knew that when he kissed this girl, his mind would never romp again like the mind of God. Obsession, Calvin Klein. This exciting holiday edition of Fabulous Value, yours now, exclusively at Dillard's. Louisiana's volume Toyota dealer has got the finest selection of used cars ever, and we're happy to make you 
happy with the deal of a lifetime on a used car of your choice. Hurry on down to Price of Lord Toyota, darling. Watch Channel 2 Saturday. You could win over $7 million. 2020. From ABC News, around the world and into your home.